So you should have already learned about monocular depth cues, um, but in this presentation, we're going to start learning about binocular depth cues. Uh, so just to remind ourselves, depth perception is about figuring out the location of objects in relation to ourselves. So how close or far are things from where we are? Um, and so one of the major ways that we're able to do that is through the use of what we call binocular cues. Um, these are depth cues, such as the one we're going to learn in uh, this video called uh, retinal disparity, that, de that depend on the use of two eyes. Um, and so there's a couple of big depth cues that we use um, that requires a comparison of what each of our eyes is experiencing in order for us to figure something out about depth. Retinal disparity um, is defined um, as the process um, that involves comparing images from the retinas in both of our eyes. Um, and when this comparison occurs, the brain is going to compute distance. Um, and what happens with retinal disparity is that the greater the difference, um, the closer the object is to you. And the definition, I think, can be a little bit confusing, but if you think about it or if you try out a couple of things, hopefully you'll be able to understand this. First is just um, basic foundational understanding. You know that you have two eyeballs situated in two different locations on your face. And because they have two different geographic locations, they actually receive slightly different images. That's what retinal disparity relies on because your brain has to take those two slightly different images and overlap them and give you one cohesive scene of the world in front of you. And if you try a couple of things, you're going to be able to see that the closer things are to our eyes, the more different those images get. Um, for example, you guys all probably did this when you were young. Um, if you were to take a finger um, and put it like right in front of your face and then close one of your eyes and look at the finger and then switch the eye that you have closed and look at the finger again and then go back and forth and back and forth, what you'll see happening in front of you is that that finger appears to be sort of jumping from side to side. And it appears to be jumping because there's a really big difference between what your right eye sees and what your left eye sees when you're looking at something really close. Now, if you pick a spot in the distance, um, you know, a spot on the wall, for example, I'll look at the clock. If I close my eyes and go back and forth, the clock doesn't really seem to move that much. That's because it's so far away that the distance um, or that the uh, image projected onto both of my retinas is actually pretty similar. Retinal disparity is really helpful when we're dealing with nearby objects. Um, and your book has um, an example or has a suggestion of something you could do. So if you want to do this, um, you're going to need two pens or pencils or something like little points. I'm going to use these two markers. And first, if you hold this really close to your face with your eyes open and try to touch the points together, it's pretty easy. Both eyes are working. You can figure out, okay, yes, got it. The tips can touch together. However, if you hold at the same distance from your eyeballs, but close one of your eyes and then try to get them to touch each other, it's much, much, much more challenging. Um, and that's because without retinal disparity uh, to help us out with such a close image, it becomes very challenging to be able to see the difference or um, to be able to see the difference between the images because we only have one eye open. Therefore, it's really hard uh, to see um, the depth of all right. Um, one of the things, hopefully, um, that you've been thinking of is, well, how do depth cues then allow us to simulate or to fake a sensation of depth, um, for example, in 3D movies? The answer is um, makers of 3D movies make use of retinal disparity, and they actually trick your brain by um, providing false visual information. Uh, one of the reasons why you need to wear special glasses into a 3D movie is because the glasses provide a slightly different image to each one of your eyeballs or to each one of your retinas. Uh, when a filmmaker is making a 3D movie, they actually film things from two different cameras. Um, they're usually cameras that are side by side, and so they film the same scene just from two cameras that are in slightly different locations. Then when you put these glasses on, um, the filters that are in the glasses actually filter out one of the images. Uh, and so each one of your eyes receives a slightly different image, um, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, 